This is a tutorial showing how you can measure engagement on your website using Fathom Analytics events. Events allow you to do more than just seeing which uh, pages your visitors viewed. You can also see how they interacted with those pages. So you can count actions such as link clicks, form submissions. In fact, any JavaScript event can be a Fathom Analytics event. Uh, mouse over, scroll, uh, window resize, you get the idea. The documentation is very good, it's got sample code, but what I'd like to do in this video is actually go through the process of creating uh, an event and then showing you how I implement that on my site and hopefully how we can then monitor it if that works. So the flow is we generate a uh, unique event ID first of all, then we add that to the code on our site and then we check that it's actually working on the dashboard. The event that I want to measure on my site is in the directory section where I have a list of external links and I want to see how many people click on these external links. So the first thing I need to do is get an event ID. This is the dashboard for my site. To get a new event ID we need to scroll down to the events section. If you've just got started then this will probably be empty for you but you should have a manage events button. So we click that and that takes us to a page where at the bottom there is a simple form for us to fill in. Event name can be anything you like, it's just for you to see on your dashboard. But what I like to do is make sure that I show the event type and then kind of like use it like breadcrumbs uh, of the site navigation. I'll show you an example. If I scroll up and look at my other events here, I've got the event type, then a colon, and then I'm sort of go down the sections of the site. So the directory that I just showed you earlier, I want to count clicks to external links on there. So I will do it click and then I'll do directory and then maybe external link. So it's pretty obvious to me what that is when I look at it afterwards on the dashboard and it's keeping consistent naming with all my other events. You can attach a monetary value to things. So if you have clicks to a sales page, for example, you might want to see an estimate of how many clicks you've had and then how much those clicks are roughly worth. In this case, I don't have a monetary value, so I'm just going to select none from the drop down list. That's it. We create the event and then we get a unique ID. Let's go down here. Click directory external link. OK, so this is our unique ID. That's what we're going to put into the code next. Now you've got your event ID. The first method of monitoring it is by updating the JavaScript with the event ID and keeping the HTML probably pretty much as it is. If you use IDs and classes, then you've probably got all you need to find the relevant elements in your page and then attach JavaScript event listeners to them with the event ID for each event that you're monitoring. So as you can see here, the HTML is very simple. I've got a class name and then the JavaScript will look for all elements with that class and it will attach an event listener to each of those elements tracking the goal or the event with this particular event ID. This is uh, what's shown in the documentation. It's very easy to do, but you will need to update the JavaScript each time you have a new event that you want to monitor. So there is an alternative way where you just need to update the HTML. Let's have a look at that. This second method uses data attributes. So while there is JavaScript, you effectively write it once and then in the future, your event IDs can be added to the HTML so you're not touching the JavaScript. I find this is more scalable and it's also useful if you've got people on the team who are not coders or you don't want them touching the, the code. So they can just add this data attribute to the HTML with the relevant event ID and it will be counted. You can use any name for the data attribute. I've kept it simple here. As you can see, I've got data hyphen FA. So that FA part can be anything you like. And then I would add my event ID in there. The JavaScript, as you can see, is um, very similar to before, but what we're doing is we're getting the event ID from any element that has that particular data attribute, 
and then counting the uh, interactions with that. So this is what I'm going to use in this particular example. I'm going to update my website right now with the data attribute using the event ID that we just got earlier. And then I'm going to come back and show you that it really is implemented and we'll have a look at the dashboard and hopefully it'll be getting picked up. Okay, I've just updated my site with this event ID here. And first of all, let's check that it actually has taken effect. So I'm going to refresh the directory page. And now if we inspect the element, uh, we should see with the link. Yes, there we go. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the link here and data FA equals and the event ID that we generated earlier. So the JavaScript that I already have on the site is going to look for any links with this particular data attribute and then count clicks on them and then record them individually with their respective event IDs here. Let's see that it works. I have made sure that I'm not blocking my home IP. So if I click one of these, it should work. Mm -hmm. Let's click the top one. Okay, we're going to go back to the dashboard now for my site. And if we go down to the events, it's probably going to have one click because it's only me so far, I think. And if we go back towards the end, there we go. Click directory, external link. That's me. So there we go. We generated a unique event ID. We added it to our site, uh, in this case with HTML because we had existing JavaScript, but you could just update your JavaScript each time. And we then were delighted to see that when we clicked on the links, it was actually reflected in the dashboard here. I should point out that in the directory, the list of uh, links here, I actually added that same event ID to every external link here. There we can see the same ID here. So whichever link somebody clicks, it's all going to be counted as that same event. Let's try it by clicking on the second link. And if I go back and refresh the dashboard again, I'm hoping, yes. Okay, another link here. So I'm the same person, but I've now done this twice. I've done this event twice. I find monitoring events like this very useful for things that can't be captured with regular analytics. In particular, in my case, it's monitoring clicks to external sites, including affiliate links, and monitoring clicks on PDF files or zip downloads. Very helpful. If you want to find out more, I do recommend you go to the official documentation here. In the meantime, I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching.